So when did you start eating no sugar, no flour, doing the weight loss thing? I started um, eating no sugar, no flour in October, 2017. So three and a half, I'm gonna turn my, if I can turn my volume down, then I won't hear it because the delay is throwing me off. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. there we go. Okay, so to October, 2017. So three and a half years that I have been eating this lifestyle with food boundaries. And it's been one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. I totally agree. I think we started like just a year after you yeah. We started in October also yep. in 2018. So that's kind of fun. That must be like the season of starting new things. <laughs> Yeah, and can you guys? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I'm hearing. I can't hear. Can you? Do you hear the delay? I don't. Yeah. But I think there is just a slight delay between the live streams. Okay, but I have my other thing. Oh, I have my tablet off, so I'm trying to. It's not my tablet doing that. So I'm trying to figure out what's happening because when I'm talking, I'm hearing you talking and I can't figure out exactly who's where. Oh talking. no, it's doing the delay. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we'll make sure to make extra pauses between the sentences. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. But we can hear you. So hopefully. Okay. And I can hear you and then I hear myself talking at the same time. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. That's oh, okay. Man. We'll make it work. Yes. We'll just work around. We will make it work as long as everyone can hear us. Yeah, exactly. If it at least sounds good on the outside end. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when you started or like now time, how much, you don't have to like, if you don't want to say, but maybe like how much of a size difference are you now compared to starting or like how much weight have you lost? Um, I have lost a hundred and 30 pounds. Oh my goodness. Total. I had gotten to 150 pounds and then over last year slowly um, had, you know, gained like 18 pounds. Um, not at all worried about it. It'll come right back off, but. Exactly. That's one thing that I really like too is even if like there is that little bit of weight creep or you do gain weight, it's not scary because right. you know exactly what to do you can right. take that control again. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and it was just kind of a slow, a slow creep and, but I came from big numbers. So reality is 20 pounds. It isn't a, a massive amount for me. Don't want it, but so I still have about 40 left to lose total. That is amazing. Wow. That's more than halfway. That is yeah. fabulous. Yeah. And yeah. what a huge accomplishment. Yes. I know. Between us three, how much, if you want to say, I mean, you don't have um, to. It was like 87 pounds. I would still want to lose a few still, but yeah. Yeah, I probably haven't lost that much, but I didn't weigh myself. That was a huge <laughs> thing for me in the beginning. I could not go, if the scale didn't move, it just <laughs> crashed me. I could not do the scale for mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so smart anyway, because we attach so much worth to that number and we, yeah. we don't need to, but we do. It's the culture we live in. Yeah. Exactly. And I've lost about the same 87 and then like uh, I gained a couple pounds and lost them again. So I mean, it's that scale goes through this all the time, but I totally understand. But thankfully we know exactly what to do to just, oh, mm -hmm. I know exactly what to do. It's not like. I'm spiraling out of control. Here we go again, all the way back to the top. So yes, that is really awesome. So let's start our Q and A. Okay. I'm... Oh no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, let, let me see if I can grab my headphones really quick. That might help. That's because I'm wondering if, because I'm hearing it's, it's a little bit tricky. So give me just one second. Can I do that? Yeah. All right, give me one second. I'm just going to turn this here. You can look at my blind. <laughs> so, we can see your outside. 
So we're so glad everybody joined us. Yes. Everybody has a different journey, a different story, but every single one is a victory. If you are making any steps at all, if you are even changing the slightest thing, it's victory. Yes. And so even when we say how much we've lost and you're like, oh man, I've been on this for five years. I haven't lost that much. What's wrong with me? No, 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 no. It's victory. Right exactly. Awesome. Yes. And it's those little small, enjoy like the small victories because they really do add up. Yeah. Because I did get to a spot where I'm like, oh, maybe I'll start maintenance. And I thought it's going to be this like glorious oh, <laughs> moment. Like, oh, I look like a hot model now. <laughs> I like flat everything. I got the abs, but it wasn't like that. I'm like, this is it, huh? And I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I celebrated the little things before yeah. hitting that point. But then I did go back to weight loss. So yeah. it is a dance. Yeah. Yes. Are the headphones working? This is better. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because I was having trouble seeing what you were saying currently and what I was hearing. So yay. I think we got it. Oh, my gosh. Yay. Technical so difficulty. we're all learning. So if you're watching, now we know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That was my first time. And of course, you look so cool with headphones on, too. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> my husband all my, my husband and my kids have AirPods, and they're like, you need AirPods. And I'm like, no, I do not want AirPods. I want a big cord. <laughs> yes, I just look at those things, and I lose them already. And I don't know. I know. That. Exactly. <laughs> so crazy. So this is a Q&A, which is so fun. So... I was thinking about, oh, all the questions that we could ask. So I'll just start out because this is a question I like to ask everyone. It's a really fun question. A good icebreaker. It <laughs> is. Okay. It's really serious and it's really deep and it's really, you have to really soul search. If you could be any movie character from any movie, <laughs> who would you be? Oh, man. Who would I be? Oh my gosh, that is a really tough one. I thought you were going to say, who would I meet? Who would I be? That's really hard because I, you know, I can't say I have one. I think I would just be myself and hang out with them because I don't know. I have a hard time picking. I, I might say one of the disciples from Chosen, I guess. <laughs> That's all I can think about. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay, if you have not seen the Chosen series, oh, you yeah, have to watch it. So it's free too. I think yeah. it's you can get like the Chosen app or even YouTube or all that stuff. They just came out with the new episode for season one, and mm -hmm. oh, it is or season two. It is life changing. Yeah, it's so good, so good. Oh, Deb pa Babcock said that Christy, you are Wonder Woman. Aww. Oh Yay. my goodness. Yay. So good. <laughs> Well, thank you, Deb. You're pretty wonderful yourself. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'll put you on the spot. We did a question. How about if you have a question for e any one of us? Yes. So I do. I was think I, I just admire all that you all do. The three of you do so many different things. And so I think about Kelly's writing. Okay, so I do have questions. So one of the questions I would ask is, have you been writing your whole life or is that just something that came up or a dream of yours? Um, it was totally a God thing. I didn't have any interest in writing. Um, one time when Natalie and I were young, we were playing dolls and I would come up with the stories and it wasn't just playing dolls. It was serious. It was about saving princess, you know, all this stuff. Wow. And she just this little kid goes, Kelly, you should write a book. And I'm like, okay. And then we just forgot about it, kept playing. And so I would draw stories and all, all my life I've been coming up with stories and I didn't know it was to write a book. And wow. so one winter, um, I sat down and I wrote the first chapter of a book and I had no idea where it was gonna go. And oh my gosh, I was like, where has writing been all my life? This is it. And I could feel God's pleasure when I was writing. I knew this is what I was supposed to do. And so um, years later, it was just, the whole process was a God thing. And now I have um, a sixth 
historical Christian wow. novels out and one like a self-help uh, to get free from worry. So it's so exciting. And now I'm helping other people publish their works and it is just so fun. <laughs> so cool. That is awesome. Yes. I just admire all of you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> and Natalie, you know what big question? People always ask me about Natalie, like, do you know who, do you know Natalie and all her cookbooks? And I'm like, yeah, well, yes, I know Natalie. You know, I have gotten to know you over the past couple of years and love your cookbooks, love watching you. So the big question I have is how many hours a week do you spend in your kitchen creating? That's a really good question. It's really kind of random, but I usually make kind of the dinners we we're everybody's on their own for like breakfast and lunch because we all live together in one big house we're like a bunch of roommates it's really fun so we have two guys in our house and they don't eat sugar flour free they're kind of just on the sidelines okay with them so uh, i usually cook dinner for everyone we'll they'll help sometimes <laughs> and we'll do it all together or we'll just kind of make dinner so i make dinner and I try to do it every other day, so I'm not in the kitchen every single day cooking, because I'd oh. be like, John, everybody just make your own food. We're having water sandwiches. That's it. <laughs> water sandwiches. <laughs> Mondays, we're home, and then I'll, like, get on a baking kick, and then I'll make a couple days of breakfast or something, so maybe a couple hours on Monday, and then... The other day, it's not, it's not actually that long. It's pretty quick to just throw something together and take a quick picture of it, write down the recipe and go wow. on. <laughs> That's incredible. You, cause you come up, you're so creative and it is so fun watching what you come up with and the whole community of people, sugar free, flour free, think that. So it's incredible. Oh, Thank you. So fun sharing it with like fellow foodies because yes. you can feel kind of alone or where I think of it like a little kid, you color a picture and then what do you do with it? But if you have like a purpose and like a goal, then you're like, True. yes, let's, I can do something with this. So having everybody kind of on the same thing and everybody really liking the recipes and all that stuff, that's really a motivator. Cause I'm like, oh, people are going to like this one. I got to share it with them or we yes. can make it together. So that always makes it really fun too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I have a question, but you know, first, so I would see your before and after pictures and I was like, oh my gosh, because during that time, you know, I was just still grieving the food loss that we were giving up and those pictures really helped, you know, all the before and after pictures just really helped to inspire me. If these people can do it, surely we can do it, you know? <laughs> and so I saw that and then you've just been so kind all the time and your videos are so sweet and it's just so amazing what God is doing through you. And I just always, we always felt like a connection. We're like, okay, she's a homeschool mom. That's why, that's why. Yes. She's a Christian. Oh, that's why. Yeah. So my question for you is in your weight loss journey, when was the first time that it, you realized, oh my gosh, I'm free from food addiction. You know, not that you would arrive, but when was that and how did you feel it? Like, I'm free. It was probably about 60 days in. I wouldn't say I was totally free, but the first month I cried the whole month. I mean, I was grieving so, so hard and I didn't even know that then. I just thought I was missing food, but I didn't realize the deep grief and the deep emotion that was going to come with that. So literally cried for a month and at the drop of a hat. And my kids even asked my husband, you know, why, what's, why is mommy so sad? And, and I was very open with them. And I said, I've loved food for a long time. I've really loved food way too much. And it was really hard to let it go because all the emotions that I had stuffed down were surfacing up and bubbling up to the surface and they come out as tears. <laughs> so I let the tears go, I let it out, you know, so for about the first 30 days, and then around 60 days, I remember thinking, I never have to come up with another plan. I never have to worry about dieting again. I never have to worry about, you know, I mean, I have not had, I've, it's not been a perfect journey. I've had slip ups and all of that, but 
I knew that I had arrived to a no, to a new identity of no sugar and no flour. And that was magical. It was like, okay, I am here for the long haul. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yes. Yes, exactly. And I think every one of us can totally identify with that. It's so true. And that whole grieving process. Yes. Yes, totally. That is so amazing. Yeah. Just you saying that I'm like, oh, I can just feel it. <laughs> yes. Just that no yeah. more having to, oh, what's going to be the next diet or I'm going to gain this back. I might as well save all my big clothes because yep. it's a huge guilt cycle every night I fall to, I go to sleep and I'd be like, I messed up again. I messed up again. And just being free of that guilt cycle. I was like, this is new territory. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it's no more food loop. I mean, I would, would call it a food loop. I'd go to bed thinking, okay, in the morning, and I would literally wake up and think, okay, did I eat poorly yesterday? Where am I at? Where am I doing? And it was this whole loop all the time. And so to be free from that was just awesome. Because even if I slip up or make a poor choice, I still know the answer and I'm still right back. Exactly. It's your identity now that mm -hmm. just, that I just don't eat those things. And if you mess up, you go back to, this is your normal, which right. is awesome. Instead of going back to the old normal of, well, we messed up, let's just eat the whole house. Who cares now? <laughs> <laughs> right. That is just so awesome. Okay, right. so I, I have a, oh, do you have another question? No, go ahead. I was gonna ask, so Maggie is your name, right? Yeah. You, Mama Maggie. Okay. I, I forgot it. I forgot it this morning when I was doing a video and then I thought, no, I know your name. So which one of you did you say found uh, the idea of boundaries first? Okay. So it was you. So I had been on every program you can imagine through the years and my whole family deals with weight. And so I thought, you know what? I've got to find an answer here. And I thought I would pray. I mean, I just prayed for so long. And one day I was sitting having my devotions and just this thought came, uh, get your phone and look on Facebook. And I thought, oh my gosh, that can't be God. That's gotta be the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sat there and it was over and over. I thought, okay, okay. So I, I got on the Facebook and there was Susan Pierce. Is that her name? Yep. And uh, she was actually doing one of her um, teachings and it was on willpower. That's exactly what I needed. And so I listened to it and I thought, oh my gosh. And then it was, do you want to do the 14 day challenge? Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I wonder what my girls are gonna say because I don't wanna do this alone. Yeah. I'm just so gonna you... do the 14 day challenge and then I will ask them if they just want to do it with me. Yeah. So I went ahead and paid for it. I think it was, you know, like 30 bucks or something. So we were having lunch together in the living room here. And I told him, I said, I said, okay, I'm going to tell you something crazy. <laughs> you don't have to do this. It's only 14 days. But so then I think we watched, mm -hmm. we watched the teaching and Kelly, what Kelly said, um, no chocolate. <laughs> I was a chocoholic big time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would be about 9.30, quarter to 10, and our stores all closed down here at 10, the gas station. Oh, okay. So okay. we would send John out. John, you have to get ice cream, and you have to get chocolate, Hurry and you up. have to get it right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is so funny. Storm, rainstorm, yeah. we're like, you better get there before they close. <laughs> oh. So yeah. those boundaries were just huge for you, obviously, and for me, too, is just having... The idea of, you know, I know because for a lot of years I made excuses like I can't just cut out food. An alcoholic has it easier. Well, that's not true. I know that that was a real silly, naive thought I had, but I always thought they can cut out alcohol, but I can't cut out food. And then I realized I can cut out the things that I am addicted to, which is sugar and flour. So by putting those boundaries around that, that's when the freedom comes. That's awesome. So they thought you were a little crazy, but they went along with it. <laughs> yeah. And she said, do you want to do this 
And my mouth said yes, and my mind thought, are you crazy? But no. Well, so yeah. Natalie said, she said two things. She says, I can do anything for two weeks. And then we were all like, yeah, we can do that for two weeks. We did keto right before that. We lost, okay. uh, I lost about five, 10 pounds, and then I gained five pounds after we were done. So that's like the diet cycle. Exactly. Natalie, yeah. something that just, oh my gosh. I mean, I will always hear this echoing. She said, I don't know what that would be like. I've never been thin. I've never been skinny. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have failed as a mom. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so that was huge. And yeah. when we first started, boy, we didn't know what we were doing. So we bought the book. And Kelly read the book. And then she would just kind of tell us. And that's what sold her was the whole brain what thing. What yes. Yeah, yeah that nice. is yeah. super helpful. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, well, we could do anything for 14 days. So I thought I did. I could not think too far in the future because I'm like, never have ice cream again. Never have pizza. Pizza, pizza and ice cream are my thing. And I thought, no, nope, I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to think about today. And I'm like, we'll do yeah. this 14 days and then. I'm just going to think about that. Well, more. and we had all three of us doing it. So I feel like that was easier. How was it for you? Yeah. You're the only one. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It was very different because I do think having three would be helpful. So it was just me and I have five kids that I homeschool. And, you know, my husband was not interested in doing that. He's done it since before. And my oldest daughter has done it before. And, and they like the freedom but it's it's hard for them to stick to it because it has to be a commitment it can't just be oh, i'm going to try this and lose some weight because then of course it's with like anything else but mm -hmm. so it was very hard because at the beginning i was cooking for myself separately and i would make our family meal and then pull something together for myself and then i very quickly within a couple months realized this is my identity so I have to modify a meal, every meal, to be able to modify so I can eat the same exact thing at the same exact time with a simple modification. And that's when I came across the idea of lentil tortillas. And that was my very first video and my first recipe. And you know, my son's like, mom, you keep talking about videoing it. Let's just videotape it. Let's just make a video. And I was like, no, I'm not doing videos. He goes, seriously, just do it. So I did it for fun with him and he goes, let's post it on YouTube. He's like, no. So nonetheless, clearly I posted that on YouTube and many more because it just, there's so many people that want that freedom, that want to eat sugar and flour free, but don't know how to make the modifications or make food fun. You know, like you all make food really fun. And you know, I've made some fun things, but more so I do modifications so I can eat with my family. And so those are things that I tend to share. But there's a need for it. And there's a lot of people that just love what you guys do and love, you know, some of the things that I do. And it's so I thought, well, I'm going to I'm going to do it. It's a ministry. It's a teaching. It's helping other people. And let's just share. Exactly. Oh, and thank you to your son who started you <laughs> yes. on that. We're all thankful. <laughs> yes. you're, you've inspired me. I've seen some of your recipes and I'm like, oh, that is <laughs> So like easy and so yummy. Yeah. I eat that every day. And just last night, I was telling these guys about yeah that video of Christy she put on, and it was so good about the um God gives us a way of escape, and but He doesn't just scoop us out and bring us out. We have to take that escape. And I was like, that was so good. So I was sharing with share you with these guys. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I really, it, that's a big, that's a big part is my faith. And, you know, if I want to just pull the food piece together, it was, it's more than just um, having boundaries. I've heard people say, if you want to recover or live out boundaries, you have to start worshiping your recovery. And I thought, oh, no, no, I'm going to worship God. And my recovery <laughs> comes under that umbrella. But I can see that you have to worship. I mean, we're created to worship, so we're going to worship something. But um so it's been, it's been a good, a good piece. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that is really the key to it. I like what Deb said, Deb Babcock said, the missing link is Jesus. You ladies <laughs> give us that. And I totally 
thousand percent agree. I mean, I don't think I could have done no. two weeks without right. just having that backup support. I remember um, I was just, I was just inspired to like go look in the book of Revelations and I'm like, really? Revelations? I usually don't dabble in that because it's a lot of like metaphorical and I don't understand it. But he, I felt like I should go to this one verse and here it's the verse that I stand at the door and knock. And then he who uh, opens the door and lets me in, I will come in and suff with him. And I thought, oh my gosh, Jesus wants to come in and have dinner with me every day. He's going to yes. be right at the table, right with me every meal. And it's so true that he is your, that way of escape through everything. Mm -hmm. that he give you that way that be like, no, 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 don't do that. I'm right here. Rely yes. Instead of the food. It's just so true every time. Yeah. Every time. And I, that's what I spent my life doing was teaching my kids and growing my kids up to, Hey, there's temptations going to come. You're gonna be tempted to lie to mommy and you're going to have to dig deep and you're going to be tempted to take that extra candy bar. than when someone told you you couldn't have it, or when you're a grown up, you're going to be tempted to look at someone's phone. If they try and show you some inappropriate material, you're going to be tempted to have alcohol if you're at a party. So life is all about temptation. Right. And so I was teaching them so much of God's word that no temptation can overtake us. It can't. Yeah. Now we can let it. There's times and I have let it. I, it like I said, I'm not a per, it's not a perfect journey, but I have to apply that same temptation fighter and truth to my temptation with food. And that's I did. I didn't do that prior to that. I just ate and ate and ate. And I certainly was just gratifying my flesh. That's all I was doing. You know, and thinking, oh, when can I lose weight? Okay, now when can I eat? And a crazy cycle. Yeah. And that crazy cycle, it brings like a punishment with it. Like, oh, I overate this day, so now I have to run 20 miles. I'm not a runner. But you have to like, punish <laughs> yourself for now. You can't eat today or blah, blah, blah. And then you just give in and everything. Yes, exactly. Well, you really showed us, um, you brought it up one time when we were being interviewed by Noreen. And um, it was so like life changing. Well, it was. It's so. Um, Jesus always says, "Come to me." You burdened. You have. He said to Peter, "Come." And <laughs> as long as you keep your eyes on him, your mind is on him. Yeah. And when your mind is on him, then his peace. We have his peace. Yep. And when our mind is on something, that's the direction we're going to go. When yep. our thoughts are on a certain thing, that's the direction. And the world knows that. They've got eye candy on TV at night. Mm -hmm. They're running all the food. They're yeah. showing the food. They're showing them eating it. They're showing them, you know. Yeah. And, but when we can keep our, I don't even know what people do without him. I don't yeah, know. What do sorry. people do without the Lord? <laughs> I don't know. That's a whole, yeah, I, I agree. Because that's a, that's a big thing. I mean, I do think we are created to worship. And maybe it, it, you know, we end up worshiping ourselves or recovery or any number of things, but you know, yeah. Food took such a huge place. It gave me um, a security that was not there. Mm -hmm. It gave me a peace that was not there. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a go-to for every emotion, every gathering, everything we ever did with anybody. A huge thing was with our church. When we changed our eating, we were like, oh my gosh. <laughs> We can never do anything as a church again because it's always around food. Yeah. And food, I, you know, I don't know. I think it's the same for everybody, but in Minnesota, food is like the very first thing you think of when you're going to do anything. It's like, oh, okay, well, what food are we going to have? Who's mm -hmm. going to, you know? And you can see how that takes the place of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's shaky ground. So when those decisions come and that willpower needs to work and when that, you know, the true stuff needs to be there, that foundation, it's not there. Right. And, and I think sometimes it's not just the food that we grieve. We grieve that we've been in charge and we've done it our way. And it's, it's happening because we're relying on ourselves or relying. But you know what? When Jesus is Lord, I mean, people believe that there's a God, but they don't believe that he's your God. Mm -hmm. Is he, is he God over the food? Is he, yeah. you know, Lord over That's every true. emotion, every desire, every, yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. 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 I, I think of it this way, that like food 
it lies to you. Yeah. It tells you, and it reminds me, like, every huge temptation in the Bible, a lot of them started out with food. Adam and Eve, it was food. Jesus, the first temptation was yep. food, not just food, but bread. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, I relate to that bread. Yes, say no to it. And there's just so much food. Cain and Abel. No, not Cain and Abel. Esau, Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Yeah. That was over soup. He sold his birthright over soup. So, I yeah. mean, food has always had a really strong pull, but it shows just like with Jesus, he overcame it. So, we can too. Right. He moved the way. Right. There's always that. Well, look what Jesus put in. Look what God put in the middle of the garden as showing their choice. Ooh. It was food. And Eve said, oh, we're not supposed to touch it. God never said that. He said not to eat of it. They had all this other stuff, but here it was, and it was right in the middle. It wasn't like over to the side. Just don't go over to the side. It was in the middle. And it's so amazing how that is so much in the middle of our life. It is. And you know, whenever I'm coaching people, that's the first thing I tell them is, well, I tell a lot of things, but one of the big ones <laughs> is if you look at, at a food list with no sugar, no flour. Okay. Like the things that we eat, it is massive. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. Amazing food. Think of cantaloupe and pineapple or strawberries. It's incredible. And our eyes can be turned to here and so happy. But as soon as we turn this way, we see one cupcake or something and think, oh, I want that. But wait a minute, we were so happy. Why do we need to look over at that? So I stopped when I started this lifestyle, I made sure that in my Facebook feed and um, TV shows, I stopped watching cooking shows. Now I watch them for ideas. Um, but I had to cut them out. And then I had this, you know, all these Facebook feed of food related things and people that always posted sugary desserts. And I thought, I can't, I just can't be bombarded that with, with that right now. So I limited what my eyes saw. I was guarding my eyes because what we see in our eyes goes to our mind and our heart, and then we can act on that. So there was a period of time where I really had to like stop anything food related and then it could open back up again when I was ready and strong enough and have that eliminated from my body. Mm -hmm. And so not only do we get to eat amazing food, we get a lot of food. Yes. I mean, many times I had to buy us trays for Christmas to hold all our food. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the mindset of we measure our food. If, if somebody asks me, like, well, how do you eat that way? And I say, no, you measure your food so you make sure you eat enough. Mm -hmm. because Eat a lot and so it's all the way you look at it yeah, yeah. exactly exactly it's, it's that little word change to oh i don't get to have that instead to look what i get to have mm -hmm. and like you said, it's huge like the list is pretty much 99 percent of all food we can literally have for yes 90, there's just like 2.2 percent that we can't have exactly exactly and who needs it you don't need it at all no you can be perfectly happy Right. You can have the cake and eat it too. That's <laughs> right. And thanks to Natalie and your, your all's kitchen, we can all make all kinds of cake and all kinds of whatever we want to make. Yeah. Right. I have found you can almost make every single recipe. You can almost make it always sugar and flour free. Right. It is just surprising. You just got to get a little creative. <laughs> yeah. Like a puzzle. Yes. <laughs> Do you have your question, dear? I have a question, but it's not food related. Is okay. That yes. Okay. So I'm a homeschooling mom or a homeschool. <laughs> We're on the other end. So we see through all the sacrifice, through all the so things thankful. people say, and, and we see now we're living out our dream because of following what God wanted us to do. So I'm a heart person. I'm like, if you're going to say something, say it from your heart. If you're going to believe something, believe it from your heart. Mm -hmm. And so what would be a couple of your heart homeschooling times that you've had with your kiddos? Oh, it's going to always be when we're doing character training. And I don't set out like, hey, let's do character training today. But for instance, if we're having a rough math day, and one of my kids can't figure out a concept, I have to look beyond that. Yes, I need to teach him that concept, and I will, 
but we need to talk about perseverance. We need to talk about patience. We need to talk about not lashing out at mom because you're not happy. You know, we need to talk about those things and then we'll get to the math. But when those moments, I've just learned that everything is a teachable moment, um, which can be my husband and my son particularly laugh at me like that. They're like, mom, just, it doesn't, not everything has to be a teachable <laughs> moment. Just, just listen and like, don't say anything one time. <laughs> and I'm like, but I have to share this piece of information, you know? Um, but everything is just a teachable moment. And when I can get to my kids' hearts and share them the character that's going to far exceed in their life math facts that they're going to use every day as their character. So that's my that best moments. Powerful. That is amazing. <laughs> Wow, yes. that is so cool. I want to go and sit in on there. Yeah, <laughs> like I, 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 I need to take the Christian McCann yeah. and the homeschooling class. <laughs> I think we need to write a book. <gasps> that would be that awesome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, mom. yeah, there's all so much to it. and But we knew from the beginning that's what we wanted to do. My husband and I both knew we wanted to homeschool long term. And so we we did and it's been great i haven't regretted a day of it my son is now in a high school he's in a private high school because he really wanted to play football because he played football all his childhood through a club you know a team in our town and he really wanted to play so it's a private you know christian high school and it's been great for him because all of a sudden he has this self-discipline so all the things that i had tried to put in i thought no we can't go I can't have you go to school now and lose all that. But all of a sudden, every character trait that I was talking about, self-discipline, perseverance, working hard, holding your tongue, they're all coming into play. And it's, it's neat to see. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Wow. Yeah, you set that strong foundation for him to just go off of. I've tried. I've tried. And I just pray the Lord covers me where I failed because I've failed things too, of course. So I've no, just done my best. Yeah. And that's all that God requires of us is to do our best. Thankfully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you all love about homeschooling? Oh, I mean, I think of it now because we run a lot of kids programs and all that stuff. And I see just the tough stuff kids are going through. And then I think, oh, wow, I got to miss out on a lot of that. Not saying that I didn't like have mean kids to me and all that sure. kind of stuff. You're going to be around kids and that kind of stuff. But. I missed out on a lot of that kind of stuff, and I really appreciate that. And then just having that good foundation also to then be able to run off that. And uh, we always had our choice because my dad was a teacher at a Christian, small Christian public, oh. or small Christian school. So we always had our choice if we wanted to go there or not. And there was a couple times where we would go there for just a couple days and I'm like, nope, I want to go back home school, bring me back home. <laughs> and then you have all this free time to be creative mm -hmm. without having to be like eight hours of school surrounded by all these kids and this bad influence and all this stuff. You can have that free time to do like hobbies, be creative and yeah. you know, that kind of thing. There's definite benefits to it. And if anyone is watching and is interested in homeschooling, talk to me, reach out to me. Cause I will totally talk to you about it. And so I'm sure you guys will too. Cause there's, you know, it's, it, can, it can be really great. Yeah. While we yeah. were um, homeschooling, I was a director of a school age childcare program at the public school in town. And so I would bring my kids. And nice. uh, <laughs> so they kind of experienced what it was like being at the public school after school. And in the summertime, it was all day. The kids were there at the okay. school. So they did have some of that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't feel deprived of social interaction. I don't think, you know, homeschoolers are looked at differently because of that, but I don't think so. And I'm just so grateful, you know, the older you get, the more grateful you get to your parents who did, it was a sacrifice, you know, it, it was a sacrifice and I'm just so grateful. So Yeah, it's awesome. So what is your background? Did Were you homeschooled? How did you decide to homeschool? Uh, I was not. I went to public school and I did not have a great experience. In fact, it was very, very rough. Um, I was, I was a little bit overweight as a child, but when I look at my pictures, I really, not much, but I was made fun of a lot and really, really, really bullied badly. Um, and 
you couldn't really share that with people. I mean, it was just something that I stuffed for years, which is part of what even came up as I was, you know, grieving and getting rid of that. But the big reason was I was a fifth grade teacher. So I got my teaching degree and I taught fifth grade and I was in the classroom and I had 35 kids, one particular year in my classroom, a couple of kids on IEP and individualized uh, education plan because of disabilities. I had a couple gate students, which were high functioning students that I needed to work harder. And I had some behavior contracts that I had to write every move a child made. And there was kids in a whole year that I never once talked to one-on-one, -on -one. never once gave independent or individual attention. I couldn't, I was in a class and as a teacher for me and my experience and many other teachers I've met, and this isn't every teacher's experience, but I was told and I knew I had to teach at the middle. I couldn't reach the, the higher students because then it would be taking away. So we have the higher students getting lower to the middle and then uh, students that were behind, I tried to bring them up, but without individual attention, you can't for the most part, and if they're not getting it at home, and I taught in a kind of a rough neighborhood, so they weren't getting anything at home. So kind of try and get students to the middle. So the higher students are, you know, getting less smart or not building their skills, and the lower students are staying where they were. And so I knew when our daughter was born, it's like I would never, I could never put her in a classroom where she would not get personalized attention from a teacher. And so for us, I can teach them right where they're at. Some have been behind in things. Great, it doesn't matter. Let's teach you where you are. If you're here, great. If you're here, fine. It doesn't matter, but I can reach them right wherever they are. So that was really our big thing. Wow, so great. And just think about like your kids are gonna have such a great, like super, I don't know, like super foundation for them to go off of where they get that personalized so then they can just really excel in school and then later they can take that and excel later as adults which is just so great for them to do yeah. yeah that's the idea we'll see i'm not i don't have any out on their own yet so i'll you see now mama maggie can say yes you can <laughs> attest to that i can't attest to that yet it's all still a work in progress so we'll we'll have to see in five ten years where they all at. <laughs> well it's so exciting for us because um well uh so all of us are ordained ministers, except Natalie, she's, she's in training to be a minister, and we started our church, and we're the whole worship band. Oh, wow, okay. Many of us haven't had any lessons at all. I mean, it was just a wow. God thing. So Natalie plays drums. <laughs> oh my gosh. And she sings, yeah. and she plays keyboard. And Kelly sings, she could play keyboard, but she's kind of on the synthesizer, so she thinks yeah. she's kind of cool now, you know. <laughs> so everyone, so this is just, um, it's like a dream come true. And that's kind of how they all kind of started their side jobs, because this is our main job, is yeah. the church. And so then they can work their jobs, their own hours, however they want. So wow. and the brother, who's in between them, he has his own business that he started when he was 13. Wow. A, a snow removal lawn business, which it was a business in town here, a bank that called him and asked him when he was 13 to start removing snow for them. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Isolated. He's got so many Huge. businesses on Main Street. He's got many, yeah, and then it went into but it gives him then the chance to be able to be in the ministry and have yeah. that formal. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, that homeschooling, you kind of have to have that self-discipline. It's not like, oh, I have this class at this time. I have to No, it's kind of, I got to make sure I get all my schoolwork done by this time of the day or something like that. So it's right. kind of, you have that self-discipline already put in place. Yes. That's kind of fun. Yeah. I was going to mention another thing. You had said a point where um, how, and then we all kind of brought it up a little bit about how Jesus always gives us that uh, way of escape. And then I thought of it that when you overcome the temptation, like when you say no to things, little bits here and there all the time, and you're doing that, 
I have found that it's easier when you overcome the food, that then it's easier to overcome other areas mm. in your life. Yes. I've noticed that with um, like other kinds of things. It can even be other addictions because sometimes you can like addiction hop where, oh, <laughs> you yep. hear this like, about smokers. I cut out smoking, but now I gain a bunch of weight because I'm into the food or no mm -hmm. kind of addiction hop. But when you overcome it, then you can take those same principles to other things. Have you found that to be true in your life also? Yes. Yes. Because it's, um, it's this, for me, no question about it. It was an idol and I was constantly turning towards food and deadening other parts of myself and not intentionally and not intentionally at all. Of course, I didn't realize that was happening until afterward. But in growing up, I was just always, food was an answer to everything in, in my home. And so it just became that way for me. And once I got this under control, it was like, okay, now I kind of, and I, I share this in my groups a lot, that the posture of addiction is like this, like I want it, how much can I have? And it's kind of like an inward posture because we're always thinking about ourselves. And when we open it up, we're like, okay, wow, the world is open to us because we're now not in that addiction. We're not hiding. We're not shameful. We're not deceitful. We're literally opening ourselves up to what God has for us and we can fully live out our, the plan for our life. So it's a real posture thing, you know, I think about too. So most definitely, because then there's other areas and you think, wow, I did this. Well, I need to cut out this or need to figure out how to, you know, manage this part of my life. Exactly. Yes. So true. And uh, I noticed also when we cut out all those foods that are bad for you, like sugar, flour, all that stuff, that like the first holiday came and holidays, they're always, they're always like their main focal point is food. So I, it was Thanksgiving first and we were like, what do we do with these? I don't know what to do with these hands. And how do yeah. we like celebrate? How do you reward yourself? You have to find new ways to reward yourself, to celebrate things. So I remember Kelly, she just surprised mm -hmm. us. She got us a little box and there were these cute little ramkins in there. And then like, I think mm -hmm. some bracelets or something just to like kind of celebrate. And I'm like, oh, I was, oh. Yeah, I was feeling sorry for myself. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I have to do something special. <laughs> yeah. So. It does change a little bit and you know, just like your family celebrations, they, they, they do, they can change in a good way. It doesn't have to be bad, but in the beginning, it's hard in the beginning, you know, like my family, we used to go out to Mexican food all the time. And I loved going to Mexican food because I could totally eat and binge and nobody would even notice because everybody's in the chips. And I, if I had multiple baskets myself, everyone was eating. So that was a place where I would go for that. For, oh, I get to eat a whole lot and be under the radar. No one's going to notice. Well, obviously they noticed. And you know, when you're that big, you clearly have been eating something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we stopped going to, at least I said, I, I don't want to go. I told my husband, I don't want to run the gauntlet and for 40 days after 40 days, I'll run the gauntlet. I'll go to Mexican food, but for 40 days, I don't want to. So on day 41, we went to Mexican food and it was totally fine. I just sat, I watched my family while the, you know, when they were eating chips, I went to the restroom and just took a minute in there, came back and was thinking about my wonderful food that was going to be plenty. It was a taco salad, it was going to be enough. So, but, so we don't do that as much. And we had fun doing that. It was a nice time. We would just go and, you know, hang out and let loose. And none of them had a problem going there. It was me. So there are things that we don't do anymore that we used to do. Then you have to grieve those things. I probably, let's just like an alcoholic stop drinking. I probably shouldn't put myself in a bar. I probably shouldn't do that anymore. So you have to grieve not only the alcohol, but the experience you have around it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. buying ramekins was a perfect thing because that then can build, that was great. You know, buying something, doing something that can be special. I love to hike. So I, you know, we go out, take my kids on hikes and, you know, they have nuts and we'll pack a healthful snack and it still can be very special and the food can be very special. It's just different food. Yeah. yeah. We have exactly. several people in our church that are on this too, are eating oh. like this too. Yeah. And so uh, two ladies got together for the, we had Easter dinner at church 
And so we had a ham dinner with the mashed potatoes and everything. Well, two ladies got together. They made cauliflower mashed potatoes. Nice. They were so delicious. They surprised us. It was so fun. That's you know? so sweet. Yeah. Well, and you probably have seen um, just kind gestures of people that, you know, sometimes someone in my family will make something for me or bring something or my mother-in-law for um, Christmas Eve, she had Christmas Eve dinner and she knew I was not eating sugar and flour. And this was my first year. So within, gosh, two months, because I started in October and we showed up and I didn't ask any questions about food. I wasn't going to ask her to make anything special and I wasn't going to bring anything. I decided I'd eat what was there that I could eat and I would if I needed to just have a less of a dinner that night, that's how it would be. Um, and I showed up and she had made zucchini boats with, um, you know, uh, ground beef or sausage, I think it was. And everyone else had had like stuffed pasta shells, but she made these zucchini things for me with cheese. And it was like the most touching gesture ever because I thought, wow, she actually took the time to think about me and my needs so it was super sweet. And, you know, that's happened multiple times since then with, you know, my mom's bought in certain things that fit into my lifestyle. My kids have bought in things, you know, that is just a nice gesture knowing that I do things differently. So are any of your family or our friends, um, have they uh, started this because of your? Quite a few friends. I've had quite a few friends and, um, my husband did it for a while and did really well. Um, and and not, he's not currently doing it, which is fine. Not everyone has to choose how they want to do it. My daughter did it for a while. And I, I tell her, honey, I love when you're doing it with me because it just makes, it's just great because we can support each other. And I get to, you know, I make lots of breakfasts ahead of time. And so I said, I love it because I make this huge batch for us. And I think about us eating it together. And so... Um, she's, she was doing really well and then went on vacation and then, you know, vacation, either you're committed to be sugar and flour free or you're not. And, you know, she's 18 and she was going with all her friends and you know, where they go is the coffee shops and get the sweet drinks. And, um, she knows how to, she likes to get just a plain coffee and milk, but, and the first few days she did fine, but then she kind of went off and she's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm back home and let's get regrouped here. <laughs> So I like that. It's helpful. It just is nice. Yeah. Then she knows that she can come home and if you do mess up, you're on vacation to come home back to your normal. That yeah. is so great. Yes. Yeah. Man, my yeah. nine-year-old is the one that cooks every day. She bakes every day and I let her, I let her get in the kitchen and make a mess. It took me a lot of years to let that happen, but I decided she loves it and I want her in there. So we did the um, bake off the, apple cinnamon bake a baked apple and i sent you the pictures but we had so much fun cooking together creating something delicious that looks delicious tastes delicious and has no sugar and no flour and so she'll joke me all the time because when she bakes she doesn't normally bake sugar flour free but she'll eat as she's baking it and so she told me a while ago, mom, you better save one of your journals for me because I might need it when I get older because I, I really can't stop myself from eating. And I'm like, well, let's talk about that. And you know, what can you do to not eat while you're baking? And yeah, so I get to teach them, you know, skills now, ideally. Yeah, that is so cute. Oh my goodness. Yes, and your pictures look so amazing. Yeah, it's going to be so hard. Oh, I'm going to do all the scoring tonight. These guys are going to help me and it's going to be so hard. Oh my gosh. I don't know how you do it because really when I made ours, I thought, oh my gosh, they look so good. And then I saw everybody else's and I thought, oh no, that one's going to win. I already have in my head, which one's going to win. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I kind of just closed my eyes and picked them. No. Yeah. Well, that's gotta be tough. It is because everybody, my goodness, the game has been up to this <laughs> time. And that's been more entries and my goodness, people but there's are different prizes for different things. So yes. it doesn't have to just be the prize for what looks a certain right. way. Right. There's so many different, because I'm like, I can't just pick one. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have one for like the most creative, the one for oh, the good. most beautiful. How about the most beautiful background? The one who sends you the most money. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always 
so fun. And then again, to have like a purpose to make something, it makes it even better. Yes, it does. Is you get to eat it for breakfast when I know totally win, total win. Does she like to eat it? Does it taste good to her? Um, it looks better than it tasted to her. Okay. So the next morning she went to eat it. And the problem is, you know, and when, when a person eats sugar regularly and they don't even have that much, I mean, every few days there's a dessert or whenever we go somewhere, it seems like somebody has dessert, your palate, nothing. If you're not eating that sugar and you're eating something that we think is sweet to them, it's not. So she said, it looks so, and plus we did a special frosting with the, you know, yogurt. So it looked really sweet. It looked like it was going to be really sweet. And to me it was, but to her it wasn't. So she ate some of it and I thought, oh no, either eat it all or, or none. Cause if you eat none, I can eat it. But she dipped in and ate about a third of it. And I thought, what do I do with this now? So then my other daughter came and ate another portion. And then the youngest daughter ate the last. So I'm like, yeah, get it away. Cause if there's just a little bit, I don't know. I can't, I, it's not a full portion. I'm not going to eat it, but I can't get rid of it. And I can't match the portion. <laughs> The first time we had Greek, plain Greek yogurt, oh, no. we were on vacation. We were camping and we thought, okay, we're getting this Greek yogurt. Yeah. It's going to be so yummy. And so we each took a spoon and we went away like, oh, it's so bad. And I think we put like fresh blueberries. So, you know, those are not like sweet. At right. All. Yes. They're, just, they're not like juicy or anything. So I'm like, <laughs> this is like sour cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the last, the latest video I did was that trick I do is just literally two ounces of banana with four ounces of yogurt and it tastes like sweet yogurt. And it does. it's a and simple it's, little trick. Oh, it's so good. The banana in it, what bananas are magical food. They oh yeah. Everything so sweet and it gives it like a marshmallowy texture. Like it's fluffy and I don't know. It's just so good. So when yeah. we go to the store, cause there's five of us, you know, <laughs> we buy a huge amount of bananas and people make comments. Oh, so we do a, a live Bible study on Tuesday, when Tuesday, Thursday, Friday night, Thursday and Friday is here. And so it's, pointed right to our basket. We have all oh, these bananas. <laughs> are like, wow, you really like the bananas. Yes. Well, they're so versatile. And it's, I mean, sometimes we eat them plain, but it's usually in something. Yeah. yeah. And then if they start to go bad, it's perfect. I can just make up a bunch of breakfast and freeze them. And yeah, it is a magical food. I agree. It's on little casing. <laughs> and you guys were having, you ran out of fruit. Was this when everything froze oh. over in Texas? It, no, it was when COVID hit, the quarantine hit, when all the crazy grocery run happened. When, I, when you put that on, I saw that, I'm like, this is tragic, <laughs> seriously <laughs> tragic. What are they going to do? Oh, I was, I actually was very nervous because I couldn't get bananas and I couldn't get oats. So oh, I no. ordered a huge thing of oats on Amazon. This, I don't even know where, I mean, I, well, it came, came from Amazon somewhere here, but because I thought if I don't have oats and bananas, what am I going to do? Cause I love that. But mainly it was the bananas that are so helpful to cook and, you know, just have plain and make all different recipes with. So fortunately they came back in and I got plenty of bananas. <laughs> I saw that. And I, I think I grieved for you. A little too. I'm like, Oh, oh no, no. What is she gonna do? I think we bought extra. Yeah, we did. That. We, we bought did, like, like tons of extra. more. <laughs> Smart. And now, instead of sending John on like junk food runs, we're like, John, we have one banana in the house. You better get to that grocery <laughs> store and just get a bunch or two yeah. or three. Yeah. Because it's got to have bananas. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you all have then for the boys, do they have sugar and flour foods in the house? And do they keep them a certain place or how is that? I, we don't really do like sugar foods, like ice cream. If that comes in the house, you will be, you have to live outside because okay. that, just that's opening the freezer and seeing that, that would be scary. Yeah. But I've had, like, they'll I have buns or like noodles or stuff like that. And right. that's the place for me, but yeah. they have some chips. Yeah, they have chips. But they're I eating them. pretty good, really. They are. Good. Yeah. yeah. But they go to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Get, like pizzas and stuff but usually they don't bring it home when we're here because they don't want us to feel bad which is really nice it so. is very nice 
yeah, yeah. that is helpful to have supportive, kind people. And I, I, yeah, even though my family doesn't eat the way I do, they're very kind, they're very supportive and they are, you know, wherever we are, we were at Chili's and they brought free chips for everybody. And my two little girls put menus up so I didn't have to see them oh. because I was here and they literally put a barricade so I didn't have to see the chips. I could, I would have been fine, but I thought, how sweet. What a neat opportunity for them to have that gesture. <laughs> that is so sweet. That is really sweet. Yeah, the guys have done that once in a while. They'll be like, we don't have anything here. We have nothing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so sweet. Well, yeah. speaking of parties and being giving and things, Christy, you have put together a beautiful giveaway for today. Yes. And you have... The winners, so we'll have you. Okay. Winners. Let's see. I don't have the bag with me, but so we have, I couldn't just choose one. And so even just a few minutes ago, I chose someone else too. So we're going to give stuff away. Okay. So you don't have to, you don't have to be present this moment to win. I'm going to say your name and just reach out to us so we can get you your prize. The person who wins the big prize, well, they're all big prizes, but the, the one with the bag, and the food journal and a regular journal and some bookmarks and a pen. That prize goes to Karen Berlanga. Find a, let's see, food freedom coach. Is that how she goes by or find, finding freedom coach? So Karen, reach out to me so I can send that to you. Congratulations, Karen. <laughs> so fun. And then a, Another food journal, and this is the 100 day food journal where you can just mark everything in there simply and keep track of your water and stuff like that and thoughts and gratitudes. Um, Debbie Bowman Falconer. Woohoo! Debbie, congratulations! Okay, and then the I even have, let's see, we have two more of those, but the winner of the cookbook, Natalie's giving away one volume of the cookbook, so you get to choose which volume. That winner, and you can reach out to Natalie, goes to, or uh, that will go to Holly Ware, W-A-W-E-H-R, yeah. Holly. Yes, your choice, so exciting. And then we're doing, I'm gonna do two more. I just gotta give away more, just have to. So this, um, the next person is someone that's always so supportive and is always commenting on your things and my things and being such an inspiration herself. And that is Linda Steele. Oh, Yay, Linda. Linda. Okay, so one's coming to you. So reach out to me or I'll reach out to you and get your address. And then one more. I decided during this time, the other person I wanted to have one is someone who's also super supportive and shares things and comments and always is, you know, just so encouraging is Deb Babcock. So I'm going to send yes! you one too, Deb. She She's on here. Yes. So nice. yes. And then I don't, I always feel bad not having a winner. So if anybody wants anything off my website, which is lifeunbinged.com, I have the food journals. I have Sure, uh, surrender shirts. I have surrender bracelets. I have all kinds of stuff now, 20% off everything. So if anybody wow. wants to visit my website, we can link it below and the code will be 20 off. Nice. So through the weekend is fine. I'll leave that up through the weekend. So if you would like something, shopping, girl. Come, yeah. let's go shopping. <laughs> Yes, your merchandise is so cute. Your yes. bracelets and t-shirts and bags and all those stuff. I was Thanks. looking at them like, oh, that is so cute. Thanks. I've just been having fun with it. And, you know, it's a way that my kids can help too because I do a lot of coaching and they were, nobody can help me in my coaching. So I've always wanted a, you know, a physical product because I think that's just a neat family thing. And, you know, so we designed it together and they helped me pick them up and my little, my seven and nine year old helped pack them. And I thought, you know, this is a, this is a blessing for everybody. So. That is. And <laughs> everyone's a winner for 20% off. That's right. Wow. Yeah. So awesome. That is so great. So where can we find you? You're on TikTok. I know. Um, Instagram, Facebook, 
all the places and youtube all the same is life unbinged my name is the same across the board and yes on tiktok and that is quite the quite the place and quite the algorithm i've been studying algorithms and it's it's been a whole new it's actually been fun to learn i've been having fun watching and and learning interesting things but once i got through the initial thing because initially you get a lot of garbage in your feed and i said oh my gosh no 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 but as soon as you start liking you know certain cooking or or christian things or whatever that's all that comes in your feed so once i got that dialed in i was like okay i'm i'm good i can i can stay here for a little bit i understand my first one came up and it was like all this swearing i'm like whoa yeah no. i just yeah. want like food and stuff i don't want that <laughs> i know i know exactly was, yeah. yeah yeah so yes you can find her life on binge you can find us on the recipe ideas no sugar no flour made easy on facebook and then you can find uh pastor maggie she preaches we all do the bible studies also at uh love of god family church.com actually kelly teaching tonight <gasps> Yeah. yeah. Tonight, awesome. 30 p.m. Okay. Uh, we are this whole month, we're doing a series of Who Are You? So that really covers so many things spiritually and just your emotionally identity. and body <clears throat> and addictions <throat> and all that stuff. Because when you find out your identity, we were talking about, then you set that foundation. Mm -hmm. So that's tonight, 6 30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Love of God Family Church Facebook page. Then you can find uh, Christy. She has her website, lifeonbinge.com. You can find all her merch there and her there, which is so amazing, and her YouTube and all that stuff. You can find my cookbook and my videos, and tomorrow there will be a live cooking show. We'll be announcing the winners for the Bake Off. So you have until 6 p.m. Central Standard Time if you want to get in on the Bake Off to bake it tonight and post the picture. So you have till then. Uh, that's at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the recipe page and my Facebook page, which on all the social medias, it's Weight Loss Recipes Cookbook, except TikTok. They didn't let me do the whole word. So it's Weight Loss Recipes Cook. <laughs> so close enough. Uh, and then my website also is weightlossrecipescookbook.com. And... I think that covers about everything. So yes, winners, contact us or we'll contact you. Oh, and Kelly, you can find her novels and all her books. And hey, if you want to publish a book, she can help you out. She is so fun to work with, so easy. She's chill. And she does more than publishing. Yeah, I do um, graphic design, video editing things like that. <laughs> yeah, I know awesome. she's worked with many other people who are sugar and flour free writing cookbooks, helping their yeah. videos and all that stuff, which is so fun. You can find all her stuff at kellyallnovels.com. A-U-L, Kelly All, A-U-L. Pretty fun. There's so much going on. And it was so fun, Christy, collabing yes. with you. Yes, Yay. you all are amazing. And I just have so enjoyed this. I was so excited to bring my coffee. Yes, I'm going to get to have afternoon coffee with my friends. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for watching and coming and visiting. And so it's been great. Yes, and we'll have to definitely do this again sometime because it was so fun. Yes. And now that we got all the technical glitches. Yes. You know, one one social media platform at a time. <laughs> yes, with the devil, for sure. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, we got it worked out. So. Yes. So exciting. It's always hard to say goodbye. It, it is. Fun. It's yeah. a hard thing. I know. So it's been fun. It's been great. We will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thank yes. you. We'll see you again soon. Okay, and remember, so. you're only one thought away from a good day. Yes. Do you have a favorite saying, Christy? I do. I say, get up, look up, and never give up. Keep your Ooh, eyes, raise your gaze. Yes. <laughs> love it. That's yes. good. That is powerful. <laughs> yeah, so great. All right, I guess. All right, have a good evening. Bye, guys. Love you too. Thank you, Christy. Love you guys. Bye. Bye everyone.